Hello, everyone that is listening to my voice today and maybe watching my face. It is good to be with you one more time to declare the goodness of God and to share what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me down these years and still doing today. Today, this morning, I've just been to another funeral. Friends, be wary, beware. Are you ready to die? So many people are dying, dying, dying. And friend, are you ready? Are you prepared? So I put that message in right at the start and the challenge because there are two places where people go to which most people dare not look at. But it's all in God's word and I'm not going to spend much time on that part of it because the Bible is most times free. If you haven't got a Bible or a New Testament, just send a message to us and we'll give you one. A New Testament or a Bible if you wish. But the Bible is God's word. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a big Bible like I've got today, so I can see better, but even a small Bible or a New Testament, the word of God is alive even today in this generation, although it's talking about over 6,000 years of time, right through to when Jesus died upon the cross all those years ago, over 2,000 years ago. The Bible is still true, friends. You may not believe it, but I not only believe the Bible, I believe and know the Lord Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior and have known him for many years. I knew of about him, about him in days gone by when I was a boy, a youngster, because I have had the privilege, tremendous privilege, to be born into a Christian home. And my mother and father used to kneel down beside me by my bedside and pray each night for me. And the main prayer is the main prayer that they taught me as a young lad. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And I came into contact with that person that we were praying about, and I learned about many years later, when I was 15, 18 years of age. And so I testify, even today, that I am a Christian. Yes, I'm not the best Christian. I'm a Christian. Many mistakes in days gone by, but Jesus is the one that forgives me when I do wrong or when I go wrong. But he forgives me and he forgets. I remember because I've got a memory. And so I'm so thankful today to be able to stand here and say Jesus is still alive and well, and well even today. And to remind us too that our God didn't knew that we couldn't manage here on earth and so therefore God sent his only begotten son that he should die upon the cross to bear away the sins of the whole world including yours and mine if we allow him to and I've had this joy and privilege of knowing my sins forgiven the means of grace the hope of heaven hallelujah and as I prayed with that team around that grave this morning. You know, friends, I proclaimed the same thing as that friend of mine was buried in the tomb, in the grave, even this day. And so I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He's around you. He's around me. Because Jesus said to his disciples before he left them, he said, hey, I know you're not going to manage on your own, fellas, but I'm, when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit that he may guide you and lead you and direct you and open up the scriptures to you when you read them. And I have witnessed that power of the Holy Spirit also. Absolutely free. Never paid a penny for it because Jesus died for these things and these happenings all those years ago upon the cross. But there was something else. He rose again on the third day. 
How did that happen? Well, it's all history. It is his story. Because he said he was going to die and rise again to take away the sins of the world. And when he went and prayed at the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was going through a tremendous turmoil. His heavenly father and his father and my heavenly father said to Jesus, now is the time for you to die upon the cross to bear away the sins of the whole world. Jesus was upset. And so he took his disciples, two or three of them, and he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, lads, you come here, stay here, while I go over there and pray. And we read in God's word how Jesus sweat, nearly blood, it says. He sweat because he said, Father, if it be possible, is there another way? Is there another way? And he went back to see his disciples, and they were asleep. He said, come on, lads, what are you doing? I ask you to watch and pray. Wake up. Pray. So he went back to pray on his own, came back again, and he found them asleep again. I said, I don't know his exact words. I wasn't there. All I know is, he, he must have been a very disappointed person. Anyway, he woke them up and said, never mind, stay on then. Stay on, stay on. Keep asleep, keep asleep. I've got to go back there. And he went back, prayed, great sweats of blood we read, because he was going through a turmoil. Father, if it be possible, please, let this cup pass from me. I know what's going to happen. I don't like it. <laughs> but nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will but thine. And Jesus went to the cross, died upon that cross, shed his precious blood for the whole world, including you and I today and everyone since that day. And the word of God says, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the truth today, friend. If you don't know the Lord, you maybe don't know much about him. You maybe use his name as a swear word. But this is the best book. In, in fact, this is the one book that was given to the queen and all the kings in days gone by as the greatest book that the world can afford, the most important book. Sadly, most people don't read it. Sadly think it's, it's history. Yes, it's history. It's his story, the story of Jesus who died upon that cross. Oh, well, I'm not, I'm not swearing, but it was a bloody job. Blood all over the place. And he died upon that cross for you and me. And even as he was dying, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. We know the story, the true story. He cried out and gave up his life for the whole world, that everybody that calls upon the Lord Jesus Christ, everybody who calls upon the name of Jesus, shall be born again. It's to do with giving in, to doing away with my own will and accepting the will and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ through salvation, through him going through. Some of us have seen the film, The Crucifixion. Friends, it was worse than that. It was worse than that. But... Jesus gave his life that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be born again. And so today, friend, yes, you've been born once. I've been born once. Every one of us has been born once. But, hey, friend, that was in the natural realm. But this is in the realm of the spirit, the realm that keeps your life ticking over. 
the realm of, we are told that you are made in the image of God. I don't understand everything in God's word. We are made in God's image, we are told. We've got body, soul, mind, and spirit. I don't understand all that either. I'm still a learner. I've still got big L plates on. But, hey, praise be to God, this is our greatest test book that can, we can read. And as we fit in to the rules, you know, friends, it works. It works. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, friends, if you don't fit into the rules, don't expect all the answers. If you don't fit in the rules, if you do fit into the rules, don't expect that every prayer you pray will be answered the way you want. Because it all depends how we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But all I want to say is after all these years as a Christian, I want to say, hey, I'm shouting the praises of the Lord because Jesus is my savior. Jesus is my best friend. Oh, well, he said, you may think, hey, I thought Cynthia, your wife, was your best friend. No, Jesus comes first. Oh, that's not very nice, is it? Of course it is, because Cynthia seems, thinks the same. I'm not her best friend either. Jesus is her best friend. You see, we have been Christians for quite a long time, and Jesus is my best friend. He's her best friend. Well, aren't you friends? Yes, we've never had a divorce. Cheer up, folks. Hallelujah. We're still together because we have an uncommon denominator in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there's a bit more that you maybe don't know, but it's all in God's word. Jesus said to his, his disciples, even before he went to the cross, he said, no, lads, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you. But, hey, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And I believe that as well. I don't know how he's going to do it and when he's going to do it. Many people have made some uh, predictions in days gone by that have been wrong. So I'm not making a prediction. But all I know is one of these days, Jesus is going to return because he said he would. And everything he said in the Bible that he said he would do on earth, he did on earth. And so one day he's coming back. And so that's great. But he said, you, you'll have a job managing without me when I've gone, so I'm going to send one, another best friend. And that is, this is the Holy Spirit. My Heavenly Father, Jesus said, I do everything my Father tells me to do. But this is another movement, and this is part of the thing that I don't understand yet. And that is three in one and one in three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one. How do you get three in one? Well, there's only our Heavenly Father that can do a thing like that. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, hey, the Holy Spirit. What's he look like? I don't know. All I know is that I know that I know. <laughs> he sends his Holy Spirit. If you invite him, if you allow him, if you open the door to let Jesus into your life, hand your life over to him, he's got the comforter. He says, I will send the comforter, that he may be abide with you forever. Forever. So, friends, we've got at least three wonderful people. We call them Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. We are participators of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We are part of this earth, but we are partners in the kingdom of God. And just, I just want to declare that in my testimony right now, that the Holy Spirit, what's he going to come and do? Jesus told us what he's going to do when he came, if we invited him and allowed him to guide us, you know, he didn't shout at us for the Holy Spirit. I will lead you. He, our Heavenly Father placed within us a mind. And we can all get guidance. You know, friends, every one of us knows when we're doing right or whether we're doing wrong. Every person in, on the, in the world knows when they're doing bad things 
And when they're doing good things, every person in the world knows when they are being nasty to somebody or being very nice to somebody. We have the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And for me, he doesn't shout at me. Sometimes I'm thinking, because there are occasions when I would just like to say something not very nice to somebody. And uh, the Holy Spirit just comes along, and he said, he doesn't give me the words, he says, Jim, do you really think you should be saying that? And we are guided with the God of wisdom, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hey, I'll tell you something new and good, if you don't already know. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm a perfect person, but I have a perfect Savior. I have a perfect Holy Spirit. I have a perfect Heavenly Father. I am redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus shed upon the cross all those years ago. I am knowing, I'm knowing as I knew today, as we buried our dear friend, we spoke words of Scripture, I did this morning, over that coffin and with the family that were there with me. You know, friends, we know that Jesus Christ is coming again. When? Oh, I don't know. But I'm prepared, just in case he might come this afternoon, I'm prepared that he might be here. Again, not that I'm perfect. I'm an imperfect person. But it is Jesus Christ that causes me to walk a straight and narrow path. Yes, we, we turn off at a lay-by occasionally, don't we? Yes, but Jesus keeps us on track by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are, I'm still talking about someone I have not seen, neither Father, Son, nor Holy Spirit, but I am assured. I, I have life assurance. I don't have to pay for it. It's already paid. Don't have to pay so much a month. Don't have to pay so much a year. Because, hey, friends, it's not like natural insurance. You have a thing called life insurance. No, it's not, it's not a life insurance. It's a death insurance. <laughs> oh, anyway, never mind. I can confidently say I boast in the Lord. I know where I'm going. Won't be much longer. I just want to say again, as I shared this morning, you know, friends, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But it was a joyful service this, uh, this morning. Why? Because we've known that dear man a long time. He's part of the church here, him and his wife, for many years. A lovely man, a gentleman, a man that I've never heard raise his voice at all. That doesn't make him perfect. No, but Jesus emanated through his life and his dear wife's. She was there this morning. But you know, friends, what a joy it is to be at the graveside of somebody who you know where they're going. So we have that blessed assurance. We have that blessed assurance as we know the Lord. I'm not boasting in me. I'm boasting in my Savior. I'm boasting that this book and the words in this book, especially about my Heavenly Father and yours, especially about the Lord Jesus Christ, what Jesus told us, what the Holy Spirit was going to do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't stand here alone. I stand here by faith in the Son of God who has loved me and redeemed me and kept me on track as far as possible down these years. I recommend the Lord Jesus Christ to you. And because there are so many people quite a lot that we know already, but hundreds every day at this moment, yesterday, 
Almost a thousand people died. My, I weep, I shed a little tear. Why? Well, most people very glibly say, Oh, I'm going to hell. Yes, friends, Jesus speaks a lot about hell, almost as much as he does about heaven. Just to remind you, if you read the words and read between the words, you'll realize that there are two places we can go to. We go to heaven or we go to hell. It is that wonderful assurance that I could pray the prayers that I prayed this morning with that family as that man's body was put into the grave. You know, friends, we have something to look forward to. Heaven. Jean Darnell wrote a book. Jean used to come to us many years ago. I think she's still alive. But she wrote a book about 30-odd years ago called Heaven, Here I Come. Well, I don't think she's arrived there yet. I believe she's still walking. But I just want to pray now for any who have been listening to what I've been saying, but mainly search the Scriptures. See if what I'm saying is not true. Give me a phone call or write me if you don't believe me. But... It's not me fighting. It is the word of God, which is everlasting. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this message that you have given us today to read from your precious word and to talk about you, Lord Jesus, to talk about you, Heavenly Father, to talk about you, Holy Spirit, three in one, one in three. But thank you, Lord, the things that I do know I am assured that you will work those things out because you are the only person who can do the things that you have declared you will do. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the resurrection and the life, the Savior of the world, Jesus. Pray too, Lord, for those who are passing through the valley of the shadow of death, even today, up and down our land. Lord, I pray and thank you that you are there. You said, I will never leave you or forsake you. You said, if you call on me, I'll answer. And so, Lord, may many people cry out to you in times of sorrow, in times of distress, in times of journeying out of this life into another. So, Lord, I just pray for all those who are passing through the valley. Lord, May they be able to get hold of a Bible or a New Testament. May they, may they search the Scriptures. May your Holy Spirit so come upon them in such a way of conviction that they will bow the knee to you. And like the thief upon the cross, Lord, cry out like he did. Lord, remember me. Remember me. I come to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You will hear that cry as you heard the cry of one of the thieves upon the cross with all their problems. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And for those uh, nurses, doctors, everybody who is caring for those who are in hospital or at home bad, Lord, especially too those who have been uh, due for an operation but have been put off for another three weeks or another month. Lord, we lift all the situation up to you. Have your way, Lord, and Lord, protect those who are getting weary in well-doing. Protect them and guide them and lead them, Lord, body, soul, mind, and spirit, for you are glory. And Lord, we be careful to ascribe everything unto you, because, Lord, we are redeemed by your precious blood shed upon the cross at Calvary all those years ago. And so we say thank you, Lord Jesus, and thank you, Lord, for everybody who's been listening to this, my word for today, Lord, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, bless you. If you care, if you desire to, our name, my name, telephone number, address, 
is on somewhere on this recording and we'll be happy. We will reply if you call us. Thank you. God bless you.